you know, back then the hundred thousand dollar a year career was the big the big number. Yeah. Right. Oh, if you yeah. make a hundred thousand dollars a set. Right. That yeah. was the big number. And it's not people, so big anymore. No, you no. need that almost monthly to really function. <laughs> yeah, I'm you a long re- way off you from that. Really do. <laughs> that that has to be a monthly figure. And so you know, I would watch that and But let me ask, let me stop you yeah. there. I mean, I like you're saying that. If you went back in time and told yourself that at that point in time, yeah. that that would be a monthly figure, would that have that same reaction I just had to you? No, because as as a young man, I even it was, you know, I don't know if it, what they called it dot matrix, I forget, but you yeah, have the yeah, printers yeah. that would go dit, 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 mm-hmm. and you tear off the the little, sides, yeah. the sides mm-hmm. and it would, you know, fold out like this. Mm-hmm. I had in my room when I was 17 uh, the entire room, I had the greatest thing about a lot of money is the freedom from it. Mm. From the business capital of the world, the Big Apple, Big Apple. New York, Middle Tennessee, it says here. Yep. Sounds riveting. Oh, come on. This is the Mostly Middle Tennessee Business Podcast, a podcast about Middle Tennessee business owners and professionals. Oh, sorry. Mostly. Right. Thank you, Mr. Matt Wilson. Check his podcast out, the Mostly Marketing Podcast. He uh, was so generous and kind to be the voice of the rebranded, formerly known as What's Your Problem Podcast. This is the Mostly Middle Tennessee Business Podcast, where we talk to Middle Tennessee business owners and professionals about all sorts of things. The conversation will meander. Uh, it could be problems. It could be uh, solutions. It could be inspiration. It could be uh, whatever kind of comes up. And uh, I'm having a lot of people on again because in the past, in the old What's Your Problem days, we've had some amazing guests, and uh, our guest today is no different. But first and foremost, uh, reminding you, this is a video and audio podcast. Check us out at mmtbp.com because mostly middle tennessee business podcast.com is just a mouthful but hey once you plug it in it's already there save it as a bookmark i'm your host jim mccarthy with jim mccarthy voiceovers.com and it's your show.co where podcasts like this are made we bring the podcast to you if need be or we could set you up a studio of your own and go from there check us out there so today we got somebody returning i'll call you an alum Mr. Alum. Gabriel Sedlak, welcome back, sir. Alum. You, for some reason, like you keep that. on finding reason to give me your, your, uh, your, your generous with your time when giving it to me for some reason. Well, you're very kind. Thank you for letting me, <laughs> allowing me on the property, right? Again. Yeah. You're... Your uh, what is this? A giant estate? This is like South Fork. Was it South Fork on Dallas? It's kind of like the uh, what are the, the the Quad Six Ranch that they have, mm-hmm. or the uh, King Ranch down in De- Texas. We're, we're just a little bit smaller than that. You know? The Jim McCarthy Compound. That's right. Yeah, yeah, straight from the J Two HQ, as we call it. Uh, you've been a, a guest of the previous iteration of the podcast. It was an amazing episode because I call you like the next version of an Ed Milet. You're very inspirational. You've got a lot of insight. Um, you've, you've built sales networks and, and a business for yourself. That's just been incredible. And, uh, you know, we're not going to really go over that too much in this episode, but more of just like, Hey, what you've been up to since then kind of a thing. Yeah. I'd have to show you all the scars on my back and we want to keep this G rated. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So I think ultimately what we're going to do, we always kick off the podcast with our sponsored content, which is the dad joke con- uh, challenge. Now, this is a challenge in the term that uh, if you laugh, I score a point. If I laugh, you score a point. Fair? It is uh, is brought to you. Maybe it's (laughs) fair. It is brought to you by Mr. Ed Fox of uh, Trade Bank of Nashville. Ed Fox is a local here. He just got back from Australia from vacation over the holidays. He's back and available to take a coffee with you. I'm sure he'd love to. And literally, the guy has a dad joke at the ready. He, he wears a little name tag that says, ask me a dad joke. It'll be different every time, I guarantee you. Wow. And uh, he represents Trade Bank of Nashville. If you have a business, service, product, or otherwise, and maybe things are slow, maybe you want to tap into an alternate economy where uh, trade is kind of a big thing, you can actually, you know, for what it costs you, the pennies on the dollar that your inventory or your services cost you, you trade them with other businesses that are, are like-minded. And a lot of businesses do that. They, they cover their expenses. It's kind of interesting. So check it out. Trade Bank of Nashville. Wow. They're all all the uh, contact information is in the description. 
So far, the podcast has been nothing but uh, sponsorships, but that's okay. Getting into the content now. That's how the world goes round. <laughs> we so, thank our sponsors. He does the jokes. I have no idea what they are. Here he goes. Five of them. Oh, gosh. G'day. What kind of music do chiropractors listen to? Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip-hop. Because they pop the hips. Oh, I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes uh, they get better as we go. There we go. How do you fix a broken tuba? With a tuba glue. Mm. Tube of glue. Do I feel laughter rising? I shall suppress You're it. You're kind of uh, I smiling. shall suppress it. I feel like it's coming. I'm going to hold it back. Something's coming up. <laughs> Number three. Something. You got a How point much that does a pirate pay for corn? A buccaneer. A buccaneer. A buccaneer. A buccaneer for an ear of corn. So for uh, zero for zero. No, no, I laughed at you. So that laughed count. at me. I did. Okay, I did. so I'm going to mark that down. Yeah. So Jim, Jim, I got a point. There's two fish in the tank. One turns to the other and says, you man the guns, I'll drive. Because they're in the tank. It took me a minute. <laughs> oh, man, I laughed. That's a point for you. That took me a second. I had, I had to... <laughs> I had to capture that one. I'm thinking fish tank. Missed it completely. Tank. Yep. Like a armored yep. battalion tank. Last joke, I promise. To answer that age-old question, I ordered a chicken and an egg off the internet. I'll let you know. <laughs> ah, I laughed. That was, yeah, that dated me. That was good. That was yeah. good. Now we have your boys. Dot, here. dot, dot. Which came first? Yeah. Right. Aiden's over here. He's gone. Oh, I got it. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Look, <laughs> just making sure. Yes, sir. It's basically the, the what came first, the chicken or the egg. So there you go. The Trade Bank uh, sponsored dad joke challenge brought to you by Ed Fox. I seriously, I challenge you to reach out to him. You can find him on Facebook, Instagram. I want to say it's uh, Dad Joke Fox, I want to say, on Instagram. Uh, and it's certainly on LinkedIn too. Ed Fox, you can't you can't miss the guy. He's always got like a hat on and like an American flag style shirt because he loves this country. He so, is a card. He is he, something else. Do you know who I, I do? Who I do. You? I met him at the event you invited me. That's to. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you you met him at the. He is. He is. An, he's an amazing guy, larger than life. He really is. Yeah. yeah. Like he just is calling as a pitch man. You don't see a lot of people like that. That when they hit the room. He kind of sucked the air out of it because he he commands it. He does. He's, he's an amazing guy. A lot of he, life experience. You can he tell. needs to hear that because he doesn't think he does. No, it's true. I think. It's a you it's know. a fact. He, yeah. Well, you know, you go. In, I did a training the other day on this, um, uh, a video training, right, to about eighty five hundred people, right. all at one setting. And I said, in this world, you are easy, You are either one of two things. You are easily forgettable or you're impossible to forget right he's the latter yeah yep yep i like the guy i don't know what that says about me <laughs> right i laughed i, I don't think i have that kind of charisma walking into a room you know i don't i don't even think it's a honestly i think i think charisma is um is an extension of an inner strength that um it can't be done at a human level. It has to be done from, from what God's done on the inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's almost like a calling card for influence. Well, I mean, a lot of my charisma started out in the radio business. I tell a lot of voiceover actors that are aspiring. They want to get into the business and try their hand at voiceover. Uh, I say a lot of my success came from me being a ham. Same thing in radio when I was on the air. Uh, you have to be a ham. You have to go out on that limb and be willing to push yourself. So when I would get a, you know, my first car dealer spot, I would put myself in that uncomfortable position of, you know, Bruce Bennett Nissan and get the voice going, that affectation of your voice. And then, you know, eventually it didn't sound like that, you know, 20 some odd years ago, but it evolved into that character, you know, right. but I was willing to go there and I didn't care. But you gave yourself grace to develop that. I, you had to. Yeah. You can't say, yeah. okay, I want to be this person because you will always modify along the way. Always. Right. Yeah. And, well, then, and there's what the paralysis is, is people are waiting for this end game perfection before they begin. And there's the paralysis and nothing gets done. So they don't extend grace on themselves to do anything. You're talking about the analysis paralysis. Most mm-hmm. people go through. Yeah. And that prevents well, and, and it comes, forward. and it comes from hyper self absorbed 
self-focus. Yeah. It's you're so concerned about what you look like to others that you do nothing. There's another notion to that, that uh, a former co- uh, colleague of mine, a, a man in faith, he passed in uh, early 2022. And um, he said one time that uh, perfection's not profitable. And I'm like, bam. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. But God rest his soul. He's, uh, he was one of the most inspiring people I've ever known. He was, a, he was a godly man in my life that really, every Friday we met with, with him at a Waffle House and we'd talk about life. And Mitch uh, Comstock, great the guy. The best place to meet to talk about life is the Waffle House. Waffle House. Because while you're there, life is happening around Isn't you. Isn't that true? <laughs> it really is. It is. With real people. I think one of the greatest hit books, if there was a bestseller, New York Times bestseller, should be What I Learned at the Waffle House my 30 years as a server or whatever the title would be. Yeah. And you just tell all the stories. It's shocking what happens at Waffle House. Interesting you say that. There was an idea uh, probably 20, probably almost 20 years ago. And it was an idea born from the original Wizard of Ads, self-proclaimed Wizard of Ads. His name is Roy H. Williams. And he's got a uh, 21st century business school in Austin called the Wizard Academy. And it's amazing the stuff they teach. It's really cerebral. But he had an idea of everybody. He challenged people to go to a diner at 2 o'clock in the morning in a bad part of town and just take notes and eavesdrop and listen to the conversations going around you. And he says, you know what? I will make you a published author if you go out and do that and write the story. And he did it. And it's, uh, I actually have the book somewhere. It might be actually be up on the shelf, but it's uh, an interesting concept. And you, what people listened to and regaled as far as stories, what they heard from mm-hmm. the, self, the, the staff. I mean, it's almost like a church in and of itself. And heartbreaking at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of broken people. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever been to a Southern Waffle House, there's a lot of broken people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what, mm-hmm. so you, you, your story began... Similar to mine, okay. about the same time frame, uh, and you really kind of put your staple on what you've always done with the Rodan and Fields brand. I mean, did it start out with Rodan and Fields and Sedlac at one point, or uh, did it just kind of go from there? Or? Do it, <laughs> do it. Let's let's go there. Let's go there. So, just to kind of recap yep, for those please. who are new to the and this uh, will be helpful to folks yeah. if if you've hung in there this long. This will be full of edification, life-giving wisdom, and answers. I don't believe it's accidental that anybody is watching this right now um, because the smallest little thing in life that you hear can be, the, can be the, the, the arm that shifts that lever of the train tracks and takes you to a completely different place. What a picture. Like that. And yeah. hang in there. We've got a lot to talk about. It's going to get deeper than this, I promise. But how did all that experience shape you into what you are today, into who you are today? You mean the uh, the home based business world in general? The the, the network marketing, yeah. everything like that. I mean, because you're you're a yeah. dynamo at it. Well, you, you, did, okay. you, you did very well with it. Well, you know, all all through history. Let's just get a little little background first. Yeah. When the traditional working world go work for someone was confronted with empowering an independent consultant that can both sell products and build an organization, and you get a little piece of all the growth. It was literally like you gave a black eye to the the biggest bully in the school. Yeah. The business world had a very hard time absorbing it because you know this. As soon as you decentralize the power and you empower the little guy and you invert the triangle, now you are a threat. Yeah. And so the industry was always a threat because you were able to do really supernatural things, if you will, um, because now you have leverage in your pocket. You're not just being leveraged by a company you're working for. Yes, right. that company is also a leveraging model on you, yeah. but you're able to create time and money uh, compression where you can compound years, weeks, decades into a much shorter amount of time if you're smart with uh, sharing what the company has to offer as products and the potential of the business opportunity if somebody so does it. So I was 18 years old, grew up very, very challenged in that um, I said this in the last podcast, my dad got catastrophically ill because of the swine vaccine back in the 70s. The next morning, my mom finds him on the couch because he got Guillain-Barre from the swine vaccine. They traked him. Our whole life and our life savings, all of our money and everything we had went down the tubes at that point. Everything was out of pocket, nurses, hospitals, nursing homes growing up. 
and I had to basically uh, leave leave school very very early. People say, "So how'd you got, how'd you like school, or where'd you go to school?" I would say it was the greatest eight years of my life. Thank right. you for asking. Right. But I, sh- yeah. So, um, and I just had to get real uh, shrewd and work. And so, um, some a few years I lived in my vehicles. I used to say I lived on nineteen. Hold on, let me tell you the name. Nineteen eighty four Charger Drive. <laughs> well, that was my Ram Charger. Right. I lived on uh, 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 eighty two Corolla Lane. Right. That was my Toyota Corolla. My legs used to cramp at night sleeping in it. And I even lived in a Dodge Aspen at one time. But, you know, it's just because my mom had had a nervous breakdown. Um, you know, I didn't have any infrastructure, no family, no friends, anything that could really be there. And so you learn the trial of, uh, you know, life of, of hard knocks. And I don't recommend that for anyone. Um, I didn't have a choice. I, I think it's foolishness to learn from trial and error if you have an option. Yeah. If you don't have an option, then you have to make sure that you're extending grace to yourself as you're taking those hits. Because if you don't do that, you'll start to identify your circumstances with who you are. And then suddenly, now you'll start to agree with this temporary state yeah. that is only momentary if you can get through it. And so, long and the short, I end up uh, meeting somebody that meets somebody. Then I find out about direct sales, network marketing. And I start to see people that are living a life very differently than being raised in Buckhead in Atlanta, north the north suburbs of Atlanta, Buckhead and Cobb County, if anybody's familiar with those areas. And most everybody worked for IBM or they worked for this place or their dad worked for some corporation or something. And, you know, back then the hundred thousand dollar a year career was the big the big number. Yeah. Right. Oh, if you yeah. make a hundred thousand dollars a set. Right. That yeah. was the big number. And it's not pe- so big anymore. No, you no. need that almost monthly to really function. <laughs> Yeah, I'm you a long really, way off you from really that. You really do. That, that has to be a monthly figure. And so, you know, I would watch that and... But let me ask, let me stop you there. Yeah. I mean, I like you're saying that. If you went back in time and told yourself that at that point in time, yeah. that that would be a monthly figure, would that have that same reaction I just had to you? No, because as as a young man, I even, it was, you know, I don't know if it, they called it dot matrix. I forget. But you yeah, have yeah, the printers yeah. that would go, and you tear off the... The little, sides, yeah. the sides, mm-hmm. and it would you know fold out like this. Mm-hmm. I had in my room when I was seventeen, uh, the entire room. I had the greatest thing about a lot of money is the freedom from it. Mm. Wow! Yeah, I hung that so, up. So I every day I'd get in my room and I would look at it, and I would allow that statement because what was really the the wisdom behind it wasn't the amount of money. It was the capacity to leverage you past that point where your life is being consumed and now you have a leveraging capacity because now your money can give you more freedom to do more things, to create more leverage, to make more money that gives other people the opportunity. You know, it's just a beautiful thing. So no, I, at the time I was already programming myself to see it. At that age? At that age. At that very early age. That's why I didn't have a lot of friends. Yep. I don't believe that. Mm-mm. You didn't, you didn't really concern yourself with that at that point? You no just, girlfriends, didn't play around, didn't you were driven. around, didn't do any of that stuff. I, I was driven because I had seen, I had, I had seen what um, lack created yeah. and how lack took beautiful people and made them ineffective and react in life. And it wasn't like, oh, Gabriel, well, God allowed you to go through that because after all, look at the kind of person you're... I appreciate that. And yes, he does work all things together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. That's the verse. Mm -hmm. You don't just say, oh, he works all things together for the good. That's half the verse. We have to go to the rest of it. Um, But nevertheless, I went through those things and I chose to not let it become my identity and I allowed it to be a stepping stone. And I always had my clothes pressed. I had, if you ever looked in the trunk of my Corolla, if you opened up the 84 Corolla trunk, I had all of my clothes lined up in perfect order. My cologne, toiletries, pants, everything. So my trunk was like a very organized closet. I was proud of it. Nobody knew my circumstances. Wow. Yeah. And there's more to the story, but I'll tell you more in a minute. But I mean, a lot of that is, you know, knowing that and trying, like, not putting on a facade, but I mean, you know, presenting yourself in one way, but the reality is the other. Did that affect the way you kind of conducted yourself or just no. didn't matter? No, it didn't because I, 
The reason it didn't, again, is because I knew it was a temporary state. What do right. circumstances mean? The circumference of in which you stand. Mm. Circumstance. There are surroundings that are enveloping you, but they are purely a, a period of time. It's not who you are. It's not the, the makeup of your being. And so I thank God. I mean, by the grace of God, I saw through it. Um, and so I, I saw people that just live differently. I remember this one guy, I brought it up at the, on the last thing. His name was Vigilante was his last mm-hmm. name. Good, good. What a, what a last name, right? Yeah. And he and his wife came into this meeting one time. I joined this company, this direct sales company. We'd all be at church and then everybody would talk about it, go to Denny's afterward and talk about these different opportunities that were coming along. And I, and I was at the office one day because I had joined this company. I was standing there and he walks in with a smile on his face. Number one, in Atlanta where you were a failure at six years of age if you didn't have a Mercedes. <clears throat> that was a surprise. Yeah. So I see this guy. He walks in smiling, shaking everybody's hand, looking at him in the eyes with, with joy, like a deep joy. His wife comes in. She's looking at him. He's looking at her. Nobody has wandering eyes. You could see the love they had for each other. Their kids came in. The kids were looking at the parents with honor and respect, and they were all saying, guys, we're going to go to the islands. We're going to be there for a couple weeks, but you can reach us if you need us. We're here for you. Yeah. And I thought, I have not seen that in any of my friends' families. What does he do? And at that point, I just realized they had created a beautiful organization where they made as much in a month as people did in a year, yeah. and they were able to live freely. And then their life was spent not worrying about the budget. Their life was spent dreaming. Their life was spent encouraging others. Their life was spent making a difference for others and creating an environment in which people could be inspired in over and above the business itself. It wasn't always about the business. And then I realized there's something to this industry. And so no wonder it was so hated. And so, and there's so much ignorance around it is because when you can come in a guy like me, no education, no pedigree, no background, and you can basically create something that, that defies the top 1% that everybody spends a life pursuing. Yeah that's not always welcomed because it's seen as suspicious or suspect it's fought against and you just have to outlive your critics and turn off the noise. And I was able to, um, with this ladder company and other companies, but create a lot of success. There's a, I mean, America as great of an idea as it is, it's certainly created a lot of cynics, you know, cause a lot, yeah. cause the school system conditions you to be an obedient worker. Of course it does. You know? It's looking for worker bees, right? Right. Right. Correct, correct. And a lot of people, I mean, as of late, the entrepreneur uh, mindset has permeated society almost to a ridiculous amount because everybody now wants to be a coach. Correct. Right. And, uh, and you know, influencer, thought leader, uh, yep. and, and life coach. I mean, you know, 22-year-old life coaches. Come on. And people take them seriously. So you can sell anything in this country. Well, the school system, you know, was created to create worker bees for the corporations, for the factories. Right. And there was a pecking order. You had executives and then you had worker bees. And, and you know, we, the education system was designed for that. It was all designed for labor force and for hands. And now things have changed. But you're right. As of late, okay, let's go ahead and go here. I think, I think that was a door. A, 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 you cracked the door for this conversation. I'm going to look for a sound of. Yeah, do it. Right, so. oh, it's Kelsey Grammer falling off of the stage. Ah. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think I have a door opening. I should probably get that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, add that to it. Yeah, yeah. But we do live in a time now where everybody's an entrepreneur, not knowing what the meat neat, but the word even means. Or a CEO. CEO. <laughs> coaches, coaching, coaches, coaching, coaches, coaching, coaches. Everything mm-hmm. is a program. Everything is a course. Everything is a mastermind. A funnel. Everything is a funnel. And yeah. I understand behind all of that, it's a process of bringing people through. But let's just say I am a. I'm not going to make friends on this podcast, but that's fine because I don't, I honestly don't care because I've seen it, things can be done well or they can be done foolishly. And what you don't want to do is a good tree doesn't produce bad fruit and a bad tree doesn't produce good fruit, scripture says, right? Yeah. When you look at the fruit and you see more carnage than you see uh, positives, except for those that are on the top, then there's something wrong with the duplication because you're supposed to bring somebody through a process and make them better, stronger, faster, more, more capable than you. But right now we have this idea. Let's say I'm going, you're going to hire me, right? And you're going to pay me $500. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, great. So I hand you the materials. We meet for an hour. You're done. But now I say, hey, I'm going to take you into a mastermind. Okay. Now I'm going to take you in the high ticket. So I went from 500 to now 2,500 or 5,000 for yeah. the mastermind. But now we're going to go high ticket. I'm going to charge you $50,000. I'm going to offer you the exact same information. But all I'm going to do now is bring in these other guys that are going to help drag on this long process through Facebook pages, um, a meeting once a week, accountability groups, working out your avatar for the next six weeks. Yeah. And what happens is, is where I could have walked with you from this side, from this room to the other side of the property in five minutes or in five days, now I'm doing it over a four-month period and I'm creating what's called value by stretching the price and stretching the time. That, my friend is what this town and this country has been baked with. These guys are in every coffee shop, they're in every group, and they're doing everything. And I appreciate that, and I see what they're trying to do, but I, I'm not a fan because I can see through it. Because at the end of the day, by the time somebody has gone through most of it, not all of it, most of it, um, they have very little to show for it other than thinking that they need more and more resources. I spent $135,000. I'm not bitter, I promise. I yeah. delivered to this. I was bitter for a little while. <laughs> I spent 135 grand on multiple coaches. And um, all they did was take me through a process that could have been done in a couple of weeks through this months long elongated process where other uh, uh, features were attached to it in order to create value. And it's insulting. And, you know, to justify the price. To justify the price. Yeah. Yep. 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 And the blind lead the blind, sadly. And then every and then, you know, then those guys break off with their partners and move on to another group. And then these guys move on to another group. And then now there's issues with these guys. And then now they've built made bad blood. And then everybody goes off and buys real estate with all of the front end cash <laughs> that they made. That's the game. It's so funny. And then they I drop. laugh only because you're you're it's you're true. spewing you are telling the truth. It's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's utterly amazing. I mean yep. And the lifestyle that the is promoted. And, the, you know, right. you know how many podcast companies that I see out that I do, do the production? I've lately been baking my brain around, you know, being more, I produce a lot of podcasts, but I, I'm thinking my real uh, value is with consulting existing podcasts because a lot of my background, as you know, was in radio. And there's a lot of experience to be cultivated from that. I coach other radio people. The guys, there is hope and life after radio. Radio is a dying medium. The second largest radio company in the U.S. just filed bankruptcy. That really? Mean, oh yeah, Odyssey you used to. I used to. I worked with them in a different uh, derivation back in the day in Vegas. It was Infinity Broadcasting. Then they became CBS. They were pretty much CBS all along, but they were known. Their radio division was Infinity. Uh, so they became CBS Radio. CBS was bought by Entercom. Entercom then became Odyssey. You know, Odyssey is declaring bankruptcy. The other big one is iHeart. iHeart Media. Yep. They were formerly known as. Do you know what they were formerly? I don't. I just remember. Clear Channel. It was Clear Channel. Yeah. Yeah. And they were were the big bad enemy of radio. They were the big bad guy bully of radio that just turned it into a real estate game instead of a public service as it's supposed to be. Um, But, you know, getting that off of that tangent, there are so many people in radio that can serve the podcasting space with their experience. Mm -hmm. And they don't. Their mindset is so W2. Perfect mm-hmm. example. And this is, I've called him out several times on this podcast. You know, Michael Del Giorno? Okay. You know who he is? I don't. He was on WTN. He was a big personality on WTN. Probably the last good personality that they had. I don't care. I'll put it out there. They cut him loose. I, uh, through the industry, you know, I, I've met with him for lunch and stuff like that. He used to be a big customer of Mercedes Benz when I worked there as well. And uh, he, I, I blew him up. Let's get a podcast going. Let's do a podcast. Capitalize on the momentum, okay? Because people are, are, they love you. They love what you do. Capitalize on the momentum. Make sure that we we make this thing into something that we need to, you know, and, and get, get, get the advertisers on board. You could fund this thing. You can do this. He ended up signing a deal with iHeart. Yeah, be, be, because Mine, it was the W2, natural. It was a regress. steady paycheck. Correct. That's the security and safety. And it's like, so you you just been shown how yeah. safe that was. You were cut loose. You were pitched aside and then you went right back to it. Right. Correct. Okay. Why are, you, why are you going back for more? But I mean, that's the thing is I'm wrapping my head around, not a course per se, 
but more of a consulting kind of role with helping people out with their podcasts. Now, I love courses. Yeah. If they're good. And I love masterminds. <clears throat> and I don't have a problem if somebody wants to pay 50 K or two fifty, yeah. uh, 250,000. There's a lot of guys that are 250,000 a year for you to be part of their group. Yeah. And you get to brainstorm with their inner circle on an Island somewhere, et cetera. I understand that. <laughs> and that's what they do. I, I don't have a problem with any of it. Right. I don't have a problem with any of it. And, um, what I have a problem with is creating an illusion of value by stretching it out and at the end of it, somebody is only left with an option. Gosh, I learned a lot, but I'm still missing so much. Now I need to pay more money to go deeper into another level of mastermind or, body or, or whatever. Right. So it's just, it's like the mirage. The farther you go down the road, the more you keep seeing it, but you never get to it. And this is the problem. It just creates this whole labyrinth of endless pathways and endless things that you need to do. And again, I didn't... Uh, start off the conversation talking about, you know, my background, direct sales. I was just an average guy that found leverage and I'm not pitching that, um, at all. Uh, it just worked for me. I didn't have any options. I think I fell into that industry because I didn't have any options and it, and it just made sense and served people well. But my heart was always ministry. My heart was always seeing people set free or seeing people be able to have money and time serve them. Dot, dot, dot what was most important so that when money and time served them, they had leverage. They weren't just being leveraged and it wasn't about paycheck to paycheck. It was about the capacity to actually make a difference. And, um, I was, you know, called names by the best for doing it. But anybody that breaks through the sound barrier is always ridiculed. Again, doesn't matter what you do. You can't do it right. I don't have a problem with any of the things we just talked about, but I have a problem with it being an abused system, just like the direct sales world. There's a lot of clowns in it, a lot of clowns in every realm. Right. So you just, what you have to do is let your light so shine so that when men look at your deeds, the fruit, they yeah. see what you do, that they glorify God because of your example. Let your light so shine. You want to be just if whatever realm you're in, just do it with integrity. Be abundant. Don't always hold people behind a door telling them to pay you more money to let them get closer to you. Yeah. Don't manipulate with the silver tongue. And, you know, I get this all the time. Gabriel, give me your elevator pitch. No. Right. First of all, you're not going to pitch somebody your business in an elevator in 30 seconds. Right. Second of all, G Gabriel, give me the, the five top uh, ways to handle objections. No. What would you say to somebody like this if you were trying to get them to close the deal? No. no. Well, if somebody says no, then you could spin them through all of these sales tactics in order to get them to do this and this and this. No. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Anything else is of the evil one. I don't have time for it. I just want to be forthright. Here's what we do. Here's what we offer. What, there may be a level of interest. If there's an interest, where would that be? And I'll plug you in accordingly. Why can't we have honest conversations? Why can't we? We can. That's the whole point. Why right. can't all of this stuff just be forthright, to the point, clear, and nothing hidden behind closed doors? No games being played. Well, that's the thing is I, I think a lot of people are starting to be very aware of that. They are. I, th I think that whole – there's a peek behind the curtain that's happening. Make when it sure comes my to, shirt goes flat. Sorry, I don't want yeah, to have I'm, a, I'm, I'm looking at myself. And I'm I don't want to have a – I look sloppy on camera and stuff like that. And I'm flattening down my – There we go. Cuffs and stuff. You look fantastic, dude. Oh, thank you're, you. You're I just good. didn't want, you know, um, support my coffee on my stomach. And you, you see it all over LinkedIn as well. You know, there are a lot of like big influencer thought leader types on, in, on LinkedIn that to me, their content is kind of like, yeah, and duh. You know, and maybe it's just my cynicism. I've been so exposed to it over the years mm -hmm. that I just, it's inherent. And my you know, 48 years of life kind of comes into play. My New England, New York type of background comes into play where, you know, similar to you, where it's like you feel they're, 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 everybody's BS meter is highly tuned these days. Yeah. All right. And a lot of people that are out there promoting stuff that they shouldn't be talking about. Okay. A local coach here talking about, I'm going to teach you to become a person of interest then you better be a person of interest. You better be a coach as a coach, coaches, coaching coaches to coach coaches. <clears throat> okay. Right. In this situation on LinkedIn the other day, and I've actually kind of, I talked about this tactic this morning, this one particular uh, person, and I'm sure, you know, anybody that, if you talk about them or if you push back in the comments, it only helps the algorithm. 
and helps them get more exposure. Criticism is a good thing right. in, in the social media algorithm, correct? <clears throat> any, any, any dialogue actually benefits. So right. they don't care what they say. Because if they say, like, I'm going to say something super controversial yeah. only because I know that I'm going to play the system and get the whole world to go, nah, 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 yeah. nah, and then drive it through the roof. Have you heard of Andy Elliott? Does that ring a bell? You, you've heard of him, Aiden, right? He's, he's a bald guy, and, and he calls people out uh, in oh, seminars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ha- I have his book. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, he, I got his book because I get everybody's stuff because I want to see where they're coming from. Right, right, right. Yeah. You're not a, you're not you're basically flying his flag or anything no, like that. It's a new, I, I purely get it because it's neutral <coughs> for me and I use it as a resource to understand what their angle is. You know what? I appreciate the grind and I yeah. appreciate the drive, but I don't appreciate the twi- the spin. Always, everybody's always, the whole there's industry is spinning. There's, spinning. A, there's an agenda. There's, yeah. And that's it, it, what he's doing, in my opinion, is using the Howard Stern effect. To a T, okay? If you watch Private Parts from 1996, there's a part of the movie where Howard goes to Washington and uh, starts becoming who he is, that avatar that we all know him. You know, back in the day, he was really risque. And uh, the radio station didn't know what to do with him because on one hand, we're losing advertisers, but on the other hand, we're gaining advertisers we never had before. Why is that? You know, what about the people who listen to him? Well, interesting. They listen for two and a half hours. Well, what about those who don't listen to him? Well, here's the thing. They listen for three and a half hours. And both sides, the reason most commonly given, I want to hear what he'll say next. Yeah. And, and that's the Howard It's like a effect. shock jock mentality it is. for everything. It totally is. And again, I, I have I have no problem with Andy. I, I have his book. I read it and I yeah. I appreciate what he does. It's not my thing, but right. I appreciate what he does. Um and and but here here's the here is what I would say to to all of it. Because even in the industry that I've come from, the direct sales world, you could easily spin the plates and say all the nice things, sell sizzle you know, get the expensive car, you know, lifestyle marketing. And it can be the same type of manipulative tactic in order yeah. to draw people. But none of them know the backstory, the backstory behind the backstory, the pain or the formulas that happened that even make it possible. Yeah. What they don't realize is that <clears throat> any level of success trait takes grit. But the, the, I think the challenge that everybody is facing with right now is this. You can manipulate and make a fortune if you're doing paid ads on any social media, you can twist it just enough to create somebody, to make somebody click that thing and buy your stuff or buy your link or buy your course. But the problem is, and then, then you stand before people and say, I made a hundred million dollars. I made $50 million. I've made $300 million doing this. And so what happens is, is the money that comes in is what blinds the listeners and it blinds the person speaking it because now the money is the measurement of truth when it shouldn't have been. Right. It's just a matter of how much ad spend you put out there. I just, you know, the, the most successful people in history, in history, are the ones that are the most abundant that, and people would argue, oh, don't ever sell, do your stuff for free. No, the people that are the most abundant with their information, with love, with information, with strategy, with help, are the ones that end up outliving all of these guys and gals that come along every three, four, five years, get a certain amount of the pie for themselves, but then become um, forgettable. There's, there's a reason why, you know, obviously he's still around, but Tony Robbins has lasted this long for a reason. His messages permeate, permeate. and there's, there's definite, you know, legs to it. And then you take his counterpart which I don't know if you remember back in the day. You remember Don LaPree? I do. Yeah. I do. What was he? Selling a highly transactional... Uh, what we're talking about is transactional versus relational. Well, and see, and let's you know? make this real clear to the, to the, to the hearers, okay? <clears throat> Please hear my heart on this. This is not about any of these people. Right. Because the speck in somebody else's eye, I got to get the log out of my own, okay? I have, out of fear and desperation, not always resorted to the cleanest methodology. I haven't done anything dishonest or weird or manipulate anybody, but sometimes you find yourself at a place where you're just a little bit hungrier than you probably should be. And you're trying and, and, and so you throw off restraint and Tony Robbins, he networks with everybody. Of course you cross pollinate audiences. And of course he's using click funnels. And of course he's using all these different things to, to funnel people through. And that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, Tony Robbins has a message that works. 
It, he does. It and works. it's a relational And he's approach. been around the block. The proof is in the pudding. If yeah. he quit all advertising, he didn't network with any of the other influencers, and he purely did just weekend classes there in Palm Beach. He could consistently do it for the rest of his life. Be fine. Be fine. And the thing is that and a that's lot what of I'm people talking about. need to acknowledge, there's an old saying that you need to acknowledge the fact that uh, when you achieve something notable in life, you're still standing on the shoulders of giants. Always. You know, and he is the OG. You are the culmination of, and who was his mentor? It was, uh, gosh, I can't remember the guy's name. I, I know it's on the tip Jim of my Rohn. tongue. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. But I mean, even the guys, you know, the Zig Ziglar's and, Jim and those guys before had him. a mentor. Right. Right. Uh, Ost. His but name was Ost. I forget. He those guys that. never got to rock star level. No. But they certainly poured the foundations of what mm-hmm. Tony was able to put the, the framing of the house on. People right? can charge whatever they want for whatever service. I just want people to walk with integrity. And, and um, it, it, because we live, and here's why I want, the reason I'm talking about all of us rising up <clears throat> is because the world is debt. Here's what's happening, Jim. Yeah. The tension of the bow is getting pulled back so tight because of perversion, yeah. all kinds of demonic nonsense, political agendas. Uh, you know, The Hollywood world is a complete reprobate mess. Mm-hmm. Sale, the, the sales world, the business world has become manipulative at best. Yeah. Every, people are like, for God's sakes, can you just talk l- truth, honestly, openly and free and and now you're finding everything is tactical everything is 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 a spin and i honestly think that people are longing one thing that you'll find is if you're just forthright honest open and abundant and quit making people come behind trap doors and have to pay bigger chunks of money just to talk to you a little bit more or stretching out stuff to build value you'll have a fan base that'll follow you across the earth here's the thing though to your point they're kind of doing that now they are. You know, you see the Andy Elliott's out there, basically bold face going out and saying, here's how to manipulate the customer. Here's how to close them. Here's how to not, you know, let them walk when they have to, quote, think about it. Well, the book was all about to keeping people into the car deals. Right, I, right. I got the book and I, I thought, I, I didn't know what the book was but about. But that's, they're being completely transparent yeah. now. I can, no say, se- you know, I can say anybody this who, could, who yeah. who's trying to buy a car or trying to, you know, yeah. learn the sales game. If they're buying a car, they could see mm-hmm. the tactics. Well, one hundred percent of everything that was in that book, I would completely, I wouldn't do any of it. Right. He can do what he wants, but I wouldn't do any of it. But he's, he's to his, to, to every, what we're talking about here is he, he's doing exactly that by virtue of us even talking about him, the algorithms are going to pick up on it mm-hmm. and he's going to get credit. He's going to get, you know, glory, so to speak. You know, the one I was bringing up before, and this is, this is kind of a thing that's been going around. And again, really this is not, me. I, I, and, and I, I almost feel like my, like my face is getting redder folks. I, are you, are you getting is, mad? No. <laughs> I, I just watch I, the short-lived fruit of all of the tactical stuff yeah. is so temporary. I hurt for people that feel like they have to resort, whoever it is, even in my own times of desperation. Yeah. It just doesn't work. You, you think you're gaining from it, but you're really not. Because you might temporarily, but long term you don't. There's big prices to pay. When you have a transactional mindset, and the, the difference, like in radio, when I when I worked in radio, there were transactional ads and there were no relational ads. Mm-hmm. Okay, for a, a certain kind of business, for example, um, prices collision back in the day. They ran relational advertising. It was all about the jingle, which was an earworm. And I worked for Bobby uh, for a season. Uh, and I, I told him, I said, your jingle is uh, Mambo number five. He goes, you're the first person to pick up on that. I said, really? He goes, we made it different enough that we wouldn't get, you know, in a legal mess. And we had a musicologist actually break it down and reconstruct it so we could make it our jingle. And it worked. You know, he ran the crap out of that thing and built a heck of a business. But it wasn't saying, hey, come by the shop and get 15% off or 30% off. It was relational top of mind advertising for when you got into an accident. Oh, my gosh, who am I going to call? And are they going to steer me towards a collision shop of their choice because it's my insurance company? And he was basically fighting the insurance company saying, no, we're on your side. They, you can't be steered to a, a collision shop. 
we can be your collision shop. Now, the other side of that is the 1-800-MATTRESS. You know, leave off the last S for savings. The same thing is it, what we're talking about is happening still. Or I'm going to raise the price in order to reduce the price right. and then call it a discount. Or there's no relationship. Guys, building there. all of the stuff that I'm going to give you now, if you click on this one more part of the funnel, is basically $9,700 worth of stuff. Right. But And everybody else paid that for it, but you are going to pay $49. Right. <laughs> I, I, listen, okay, so you're listen. telling me it's really worth forty nine dollars. Here's here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm at with it. Um, here's the price. Yeah. If it's a fit, great. We are t- we are actually told that that's not enough. Right. You want to buy X? It costs this. We're told it's not. It, we, we're told that that's not enough. You have to play this game. Tip of the spear. And it's just it's just unfortunate. We've we have a. Most sales is purely, completely manipulation, and um, I just want no. I just want no part of it. Even in our own industry, I've seen it. You know, um, I think my heart's grieved just because of how easy it is to fall into. Um, it's very easy for human beings to fall prey and to do this stuff themselves. We can talk about it, but how quickly could you get there if you don't renew your mind and just reject it? Right. And, and the bottom line is if you're, okay, let me just talk to you guys. If you have a business, I don't care if you are a coach. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you have courses. I don't quit. If you are manipulating, spinning the plates, doing the high to low adjust, but wait, there's more, all the games. I understand it'll hit your cart and I understand that you're going to get more in your accounts, but at the end of the day, it's not honest tactics. At the end of the day, you won't last. You'll make some money now, but it won't last. And you will constantly have to figure out a way to, to, to spin the plates more and more advanced until eventually you can't even have a conversation with somebody that's forthright, clear, and clear-eyed and clear-minded because every single bit of your, vo- of your vocabulary becomes manipulative and spinning. And this is the stuff you have to resist. If something costs $25, let it be $25. If somebody wants a mastermind, they charge you $50,000 for it. Fine, $50,000 for it. But let's not add anything to that. Right. If you're willing to pay it, they're willing to charge it. Great. But let's not let's not spin it because this town, this town, not just this town, it's is, is yeah. Nashville is an interesting town for this. Yeah, town. yeah. I mean, it's a very bro fraternity mindset. Mm-hmm. The whole entrepreneur, like bropreneur, is a is a term. Maybe I came up with it. You did, that's but good. it's it's that's a thing. And you know, it, with the Andy Elliots, with certain other coaches, they're appealing to a certain demographic. Young. Well, and I don't want to, ins- I don't need to, ins- and it's not even him. It's just, there's a, there's, this there's whole, a whole bunch of people. There's a whole move right now to insult people, like, like insult you. To be shocking. Yeah. You know, yeah. Rage, guys, veins all over your body. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, drag yourself across the sand, say the F word every five seconds. Yeah. GD, Jesus this and F this. As though that. I mean, I've even heard people, well, the reason I use that language is a psychological reason for it. I'm like, you're a filthy mouthed person. <laughs> when, when, you, when you exchange actual words yeah. and everything is replaced with one of these expletives, you've missed the opportunity to actually express something in a more profound way. Yeah. You've missed the opportunity to dive into language that can find a deeper place for somebody to get a hold of it. I can't stand the fact that now the coolest thing you can do, pastors even, mm. the harsher their language is, the more relevant they think they're getting. Why is everybody become – so I guess the whole point is all of the manipulative tactics, all of the language, all of the spinning of the plates in order to do what? To do what, Jim? Get money. Or get attention too. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's not how you succeed in a business. Back in the day, your handshake meant everything. Yeah. Now, it just means get ready. I'm about to bring you closer and hit you four or five times. Constantly sell to you. Correct. Constantly yeah. sell to you. I know people that have made hundreds of millions of dollars doing that for years now. And some of the loneliest people in the world. 
because they've ostracized themselves because they, there's a lot of people that's, that, that did it and they, and they don't even deal with those people anymore. Well, it's a, it's an, a question of what do you want to be known for after the fact? Right. You want to be known for the guy who came in, took the money, and never, you never heard from him again? Now, How people, many? somebody would listen to us and say, oh, you guys, you know, of course you're going to talk like that because you're not there. I've made a lot of money, guys. Yeah. A lot. More than some, less than others. Yeah. Buddy, more than most. Let's just be honest. Yeah. And, and I, that means, I mean, that, believe me, that is not a look at me thing at right. all. I have made massive mistakes. Yeah. Massive mistakes. And, and, and 50% of my business career has been beating myself up. Yeah. Over self judging and all this kind of stuff. So, so I'm not, but what I am saying is when you put your head on your pillow at night and, and, and every time you have a conversation with somebody, it's not some, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, hey, now, and then you just wait for that second to pitch your nonsense to them. What a miserable life. Yeah. What a miserable life. You miss the opportunity to be present. You miss the opportunity to actually know the person. You miss the opportunity for the real reason you should have met them, not just to sell them your thing. You've, you, you can, and, and you come home. I mean, your wife, it's transactional. Your children, it's transactional. And you go back to work. I mean, that's just not living. And I think there needs to be a revolution of just letting the truth be the truth. It's, well, the, the scripture does say that in the latter days, there's going to be a strong delusion on the whole earth that they may believe a lie. What's light is dark. Every, what's right. dark is what's light. What's light is dark. What's dark is light. Yeah. If it's perverse and evil and wicked, that's righteous. <clears throat> if it's godly and wholesome and life-giving, it's wicked. the wicked. Yeah. And each thing has been exchanged. Good will be perceived as bad. Bad will be perceived as good. So now what is unethical is praised because it's profitable. Yeah. And what is wholesome or uh, integrous is actually uh, despised. But I think ultimately there is a void there. And, you know, I keep on beating uh, a dead horse with the Andy Elliott thing. And, and for example, Cardone had the sales training category kind of nailed down. He's since gone into real estate yeah. and doubled down and tripled down on that, leaving a void in the sales training. He still does the sales training stuff, but I'm sure it's not as, it's not as prevalent as what he's doing now. Uh, so Andy, I think, rushed into that void. T- not to your point, I think there is a void, and this is something I've been championing, and maybe you and I, we kind of figure out a way to champion this together and you know, take people to task. And I, was, I, I keep bringing this one up. This is from an influencer thought leader, uh, and I'm not saying that she does anything wrong per se, but it, it raises an eyebrow and makes me kind of cringe from time to time. A lot of her posts are accompanied by really professional, highly polished photos that are a little bit plastic. You know, they're not really authentic. They're not taken off the cuff. It like, you know, should be reading a book on a park bench and, you know, it's perfectly posed. The lighting's just right. All that stuff. Well, we but, live in an Insta world. Right. And yeah. uh, she's got the look and stuff like that. I did a big training on that the other day. I just, just real quick to digress uh, again to the, to the, that big group of people. I talked to them. I said, listen, every time you're doing a selfie of yourself and you're trying to show different parts of your body, that's not a selfie. Right. And if you're wondering. That's manipulation. Tra- and it's not integrous. It's not classy. And God forbid. I mean, if my wife was sitting there trying to take selfies of herself, but she was making sure that she was hitting the angles to do all the different stuff. The guy's the same thing. I mean, how many tight muscle, how many groin shots, how many tight muscle shots, how many uh, uh, upper body shots do we need to see from guys and girls? It's, it's, it's very unfortunate that that is, and, and you'll look at videos. You can see two videos. They could be the exact same video titled the exact same. One can have somebody a little bit suggestive. Mm-hmm. One could just be somebody clean cut and sharp. 18 million views. 100,000 views. Yeah. Raw humanity at that point. Raw humanity. Yeah. Less of the flesh, less of the eyes, pride of life. I don't want anything. If, if it means you get less for the sake of keeping your head on your pillow at night at peace, you don't do the first one. Right. No matter what. But go ahead. So she basically the other day put up a post that said, this post will trigger some and I'm not apologizing for it. Right. You lay the groundwork. Right. Right. Every day I receive comments and DMs asking me to share other people's posts on my feed. 
Here's the truth. And as she goes through her story, she talks about every single post just about, talks about her being fired at 43. I had no idea what was going to do. Uh, with an industry non-compete, I had to start over, blah, blah, blah. But since then, I've done all these amazing things, talked on stage, became a TEDx speaker. Um, you know, basically, I won't ask you for a free car or a free insurance or free CRM. Please stop asking me for free access to my company that I've built over the last five years. Now, I get the gist of what she's saying. Okay. Now, click here to go to join my mastermind. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. You know, does anyone else get asked for free right, product right, right. or services on the regular, too? She does do a lot of that. And a lot of the, you know, the... the and I don't need to know who it is, and there's no sense. No, that's it, fine. But, yeah. You know, but, but basically... Classic I, stuff, yeah. This was one of two posts that I saw on LinkedIn recently that um, I, I pushed back on them. It's a reverse and, engineering. Yeah. yeah and it's, and it's, it's not like, an honest post. And you have a lot of the people yeah. that are, I call them bootlickers. Because she's got a high profile. They want to be seen in the comments as, you know, championing them. And, and they tag her in the comments. And all of a sudden, they're getting adulation and, and recognition. In, and they're not saying anything. They're just saying, great post. And that's it. That's about the gist of what they mostly say. So I come at it with, uh, I'm going to pull it up here. Um, you know, on the other one was similar. It was a voiceover person who I spent, you know, X amount of years building my business. How dare you reach out to me uh, and want to pick my brain? You know, because I never had to do that. I had to work the hard way and blah, blah. If you and want I'm, to pick my brain, click here and you can join my, <laughs> yeah. my insider group for $29.95, right. normally $49.95. Yeah. So, meaning $4,995. You know, to, and to my point, what I'm saying here is I commented – like this. I said, I can't blame them for asking. I wouldn't be surprised if you did when you were coming up. Correct. We forget okay. when we came. And I said, Everybody I'll play, I'll play devil's advocate. What might someone have to do for you to share their content? Which is the real question trying right. to be asked. Right. Like, so how would I get a hold of you since you can't talk to me? Right. But the thing is, is that, right. you know, think about what you're signaling here. Correct. Your legacy means don't ask me for any help. That's, that's, what people, essentially that's what people what, remember. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. what people, that's what you're essentially yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, and she said, you know, Jim McCarthy, I share things and promote things for my good friends, but they never ask me to do it. They just let me know what's happening. And if I think there's a benefit for my community, I share it. I share things for brand partnerships. I, I have, they pay my bills um, and allow me to do the work I do. I share the things to promote my speaking clients and my podcast guests too. What do you share things for? And I said, I share if the post has true and somewhat original value. And I said, you've sent a signal with this post, as I'm sure you know. Quote, don't ask me to share stuff. Is that signal? I worked in the car business and have dealt with people who wanted champagne on a beer budget. Quote, when you can't make a sale, make a friend, was the notion that was taught to me. Uh, but, and it's like, you know, and, and. I said, what are you so afraid of if you just take the time, if it's something that somebody reaches? I know I get if people just glom on and they're not bringing any value to you. But what you're really saying is that I don't want to help you. One of my good friends, he plays for Jason Aldean. He's a drummer. His name is Rich Redmond. Mm -hmm. To this day, despite all of his success that he's had, will still take a coffee meeting with somebody new to town. That is the point. Now, you can't do that with everybody because you have to no, have boundaries. You, can. of course you have you a can. family and all this stuff. There's a way to be tactful about but it. But you don't sit there and say, you will stand behind that wall to right. cross that line. I need my bodyguards here. And if I, if I go to any kind of big business strategy or any kind of a business meeting, doesn't matter what it is. Most of the time, everybody's trying to figure out a way to spin the plates in order to get the eyeballs of people. And then no matter what the people say in their dialogue through shock or through reverse engineered posts or whatever, then they want to bring them deeper in order to charge more and then eventually shove them into a funnel to get them to pay high ticket. Right. Why has everything become that, Jim? This is the whole conversation I'm having with you. And we think that this works. It's it does for a short season. It is like cannibals. Yeah. It is like pirates. See, first of all, pirates, remember this, pirates always band together to get the gold. <clears throat> they right. band together right. to get the gold. Pirates do. But once they get the gold, <clears throat> they kill each other to get the gold. Right. There is a there is a piranha like mentality. There's a there's a cannibalisticness of it. And when now, rather than being forthright, honest, clear, here it is, and just letting your yes be yes and your no be no, and making it very clear and integrous, we have now succumbed to an entire business industry, from the biggest corporations in the world, 
to the ones that are just starting up down the street here, everybody is succumbing to these type of ca- tactics now. Yeah. The whole world is becoming manipulative. Right. Well, there, there is, when, whenever you get a, a tide of zig, the good news is that you, it's easier to zag. Case in point, Jack FM. When the entire radio world was zigging and making people believe that requests were taken seriously in a programming world. Like you actually mattered. Right. Correct. Uh, That's all the people want is to know they matter. Charge what you want, do what you want, but at least don't make me feel like I don't matter. But Jack came out of the box zagging while all the radio stations were zigging. Okay, so they came out and said, no, we don't take requests. We're playing what we want. And that was the success of the brand because it was fun. The personality of the brand just said it like it was. It was admitting a truth and being candorous about the reality of the radio business. No, we don't take requests. Well, we I've, actually have a file cabinet shaped like a garbage can that your requests go into. <laughs> it was that blatant. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was a success because it was different enough. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, in this case, for example, my response to my comments in this particular thread were off the charts. Because I was saying something that other people You're were hitting thinking. hitting a nerve. You're hitting right. a, a long. Actually, what you did is you tapped into a longing. Because right. people are just begging for just forthright, honest, simple conversations. Right. Whatever, whatever happened to it. Right. I've heard people say, okay, you piece of trash. You blankety, blankety, so-and-so, you blankety, so-and-so. You piece of garbage. Do you think your wife wants to see that every day, you piece of trash? I mean, and, and so these are the... The men meetings, I've seen a whole, because, you know, there's a big rise of men meetings where you get all these guys, you put them all in black shirts, and there's like 50 <laughs> different groups that do it. You take them, you, 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 they all go to these, these, these places, and I understand that it helps some people, it saves marriages, and I have, thank God for that. Yeah. But nothing but profanity, nothing but strenuous insults, nothing but the F language, nothing but sexual innuendo and, con- and connotations and everything having some little thing talking about your libido and giving your, your spouse this out of the other. Why has stuff become that? That's, yeah. that's the new thing. Yeah. Jim, people are so long. I, I tell you what, if you just say, do what you're saying. You know, I had a man tell me this years ago, years ago. A lot of my conversation right now is because I've come to the end of myself at a whole new level. Yeah. And I just want to be better than I've ever been. And any hair, any vapor of tactical anything or manipulative anything or anything that would not be just yes or no, I want it so removed from my life I can't stand it. So I see it everywhere now. Yeah. And I've been also affected by it. I've spent a whole lot of money thinking I needed answers going down all of these things. And I did it for a few year period of time and it only created more frustration. But a man told me this years ago, he said, Gabriel, if you just be on time, do what you say you're going to do, say this is the price of it or this is the price of it. You anticipate need before you're asked. You actually look at somebody in the eye, shake their hand and keep your word. You'll bypass 99.9% of the planet. Yeah. He says, you could be a fool, not even really know anything, and you're still going to bypass everybody else because you're so different than the masses that succumb to all the stuff that we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, the car business taught me a lot, a lot because I was, I became the guy on Facebook whenever somebody needed a car, my name would come up on the local pages. Because yeah, you didn't play games. No, I just, because I learned right. how to shoot straight and be able to lay my head on the pillow at night integrously. And still be able to do, be an effective salesman. Now, that was more in line when I sold Mercedes because it was a true gentleman's floor. There was a, a, we really did shoot straight with people. Most definitely. And, and the other dealership that I worked for, it wasn't, it was a little bit of games because you had five other dealerships to contend with. We still shot as straight as we possibly could. But in the beginning, I was told to, you know, pitch $700 a month pay- payments on a $25,000 car for, you know, a 60 month term. And I'm going, even I know that's way. Do the math. You want, okay. Mm-hmm. Just go pitch it. Oh, all right. You know, and I would, you know, I didn't have buy-in emotionally to that. Here's, they want me to Or we got to tee it up and get the guy of the crow's nest to come down and then right. to TO the deal. Right. And then you play bad cop, good cop. Right. And then they do what you couldn't do. And then you as the salesman say, well, I only have so much power, but he right. has real power. Yeah. Rather than saying, here's the price. There may be a little space. If yeah. we can figure out the rebates that the manufacturer gives us, fantastic. If not, we can come to an agreeable number. Right. And shut up. Yeah. And just do it. This other stuff is, in my opinion, 
it can't it's work wicked. anymore because you, you, you get there's too much research there's too much everybody comes to the table very prepared and, and basically a lot of the things that the, that the customer would try and throw at you you know well what's the what's the finance rate it's what your my my condition response to that would be well it depends on your credit if you want to pull a credit uh, fill out a credit app and pull a credit report right now i can get you a better idea of what rate will be yeah but you guys mark it up and i would say yeah we do and it's like the wind would come out of their sails mm-hmm. i would admit it yeah, they, a, they, a, they, it, they bump the interest rate in the finance office. It's a profit the center. Greatest, for us. The greatest way that a that a car the car business could 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 benefit is when somebody is trying to get qualified for the vehicle and you bring them in, you spin your computer around yep. and you say, with your credit score, here is your tier. Yeah. This is what they allow us to bump it. Yeah. Now we have that right, but here's where you are. So yeah. we're gonna give you that. It's this is it. And there's no surprises in the back office. No. There's no, now let's do a wheel and tire and interior that's going to add $5,000 more to the car. Right. So you think you're going to be in a payment, but they just bumped it $300 a month. Now you're the whole, and you're going upside down the vehicle by a large sum. Two years later, you want to trade it in. You have huge negative equity. I understand everybody has to make money, but my God, can you just make it plain, put it before the people and quit hiding? I would do that all the time, and that's the way I set it up. All the time. Yeah. Those are the guys that are the champions. And that's that's yeah. that was the, the path I was on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they weren't, the company I was working for wasn't taking care of us as salespeople as they should. And that's why we have the new point, you know, we're, that we're champions of, Mercedes-Benz of Music City. Uh, that's why they came into town is because to combat the chicanery of the other place that was just treating it like Walmart. Let's go ahead and talk about Mercedes-Benz of Music City. Yeah. Number one Mercedes-Benz dealership in America, in my opinion. The best leadership in the country of any dealership, in my opinion. And my experience, I've bought... You bought like 16 cars from there. Some crazy number. (laughs) Some crazy... I think... Guys, that means nothing. It just means I had no (laughs) self-control. That's all it means. You're you're a car fan. I like cars, cars and and I didn't always make the the best decisions, but um, I love the vehicles, and and I had an an end-game reason. A lot of it was for tax reasons, et cetera, so let's just get real. But um, Sam Cavett, who runs that operation right now, he's like the cheese of the entirety of the thing, is one of the most brilliant, um, integrous, and solid guys in the business Hands down, and if you are, I don't care where you are in America, if you're going to buy a Mercedes Benz, you need to go there. That's my CSI sting. Hey, I you say know. that because they have become friends. They really have. I mean, I've known them since 2017, yep. and uh, yep. yep, the whole company is like that. Actually, I, I have put very long comments to Mercedes Benz corporate. Yeah. And I said, I don't know what kind of operation you guys play across America. These guys, but let me tell you, these guys are the model. These guys are stomping everybody's processes and you should probably have them teach or eliminate the leadership in these, in these different dealers that don't walk like this. Yeah. These guys are the champions and I hope it gets back to them. You know what? I mean, I'm going to clip that out and send it to uh, Sam. He's going to love it. Use that will. It's the fact. It's a fact. (laughs) I have said it (laughs) over and over and over publicly. Yeah. You are willingly saying it. You're not getting compensated at all. No. No. I but pay, I, mean, I pay, I pay a lot every month. I'm not being compensated. <laughs> I actually, yeah. you know, that was my MO when I sold cars was to make sure that they knew. I mean, I, I knew when somebody would buy a car, when they came onto the lot, I just got the feeling. And even if they were looking for a pre-owned uh, Honda pilot, which was one of my customers, they were looking at other cars that Saturday. And I said, that's okay. You know, we took it out and made sure, you know, made sure it was prepared for them before they got there. We took it out on a drive and they said, you know, we want to check out some other dealerships. Other, I said, I completely understand. Take your time, do what you need to do. I said, I'll see you later. And they looked at me and they said, how do you know? I said, I just know. This is the one for you. I just know it is. What does what the old saying go? Um, the person convinced against their will is still of the same opinion still. Yes, that's Rockefeller. When people walk away, mm-hmm. having been sold. Now, it, now, now I feel better because this is the theme. This isn't about anybody specific. Yeah. This is the frustration across all industry now where people are selling goods and services and it has become games. And people are sick of it. And if, if we can just bring it back to center, um, 
Everybody wins. Yeah. I have I have praised that dealership. And I, I say this because, I mean, I... You don't have to, and you just do it. I You're just do to. it because I'm like, don't go anywhere else. Go there. Yeah. If the math doesn't work, they'll tell you. Yeah. If the credit doesn't work, they'll tell you. If the trade doesn't work, they'll tell you. There's no games. Yeah. That's unusual. It's, it's unusual. Uh, but that's the zig and the zag. <laughs> It's so easy well, we to do. We can't do that. We need to add. No, we got to play don't. games. Right. Yeah. We got to play psychological games. We're going to mark up the, and put leg on the payment. So when you get into the box, it, we can lower it and say, oh my gosh, look at the deal you're getting. Cause we've built all the after products in there, buddy. When I, I would sell the car yeah, first, give me the breakdown of exactly right. what's causing this price to be what it is. I would sell the car. I would, when we did their trade appraisal, I would turn the screen around and said, here's, I said, this is like the used car stock market. Here's, you know, it goes to our central office in Charlotte, North Carolina. Here's where your trade lines up. Here's all the information that I took and everything. Here's where it's probably going to land. There's where I'm thinking of. But you know, you see from the other cars, sometimes they hit it at this number. It might be higher than what we think. It might be lower. Let's hope that they're going to come back with a higher number. So that gave me legitimacy. And it was true. That's that's the number they would come up with. The same thing, Jim, to go full circle with the conversation. The reason that in an industry that had all of the challenges that network marketing did, Still does. Yeah. We were forthright. I said, guys, I don't worship the company or the products. It's an amazing product. It's an amazing company. I saw the money. My wife would have eaten the product. I did it to create a leveraging model because I never wanted to miss a moment with my wife or my children. And my boys are in the room right now. They're yeah. both, both of them here. Hudson is 14. He is that much taller than I am, which is spooky. Yeah. Aiden is that much taller than I am, which is spooky. He's stronger than me at 18. He's taller than me at 14. Yeah. These, are on, these kids grew up under the table at meetings, and they know that dad never manipulated. I never played games. I never spun the plates. I never lied to anybody. Right. It was always serving the people, and it was brutal level honesty of what was going on. Yeah. I would do giant meetings. Lots of them, countless. I don't even know how many. I'd say, hey, everybody, thank you for coming. Do me a favor, a little housekeeping here. Turn your phones off. All the questions for the end, please, so we can just stay on task. And before you leave, I know you guys got a babysitter or whatever. Um, We're going to ask you to join us in the business as a customer or a consultant before the night's over. And if everybody will just turn around, look in the back. We even have the booths in the back and the computers up for you guys to speak to somebody and sign up tonight as a customer customer, or a consultant. And we're really excited if that's something you choose. Now, before we get going, let me tell you why I'm standing here and my story. And people would message me or meet me afterward and go, what kind of a freak are you? Why would you just say no, you're supposed to wind up the whole meeting and then build value and then, but wait, and then build value and spend 10 minutes talking about the products and 45 minutes talking about price value. Yeah. Garbage. Yeah. And guess what? We created a magnificent organization of people all over the world now that have seen their lives change and have done such benevolence because of the financial gains. Because, and the most successful that the most successful people in any industry are the ones that don't succumb to the manipulative games. Right. Just love people. Be honest. If it's a fit, it's a fit. If it's not, it's not. And there it is. Here's it's the price. A, it's the relational approach. It's there just, are times I've had meetings with people that I mean, big meetings. They wanted to join. It was a big thing. We or or they were going to be a customer, a consultant, or whatever. And I'm like, guys, we are not going to talk about business right now. You're not here for this right now. And I knew that God had me at that moment. And I mean that. That's not language, folks. Mm -hmm. That's real. The Holy Spirit pressed upon my heart. You are not here to talk about the business. These people are this far from falling off a cliff. Or their life needs this or this. Or here's something real specific. And you would sit there and love on the people and minister to them. And if they never joined, which many of them never did, it didn't matter. Because it wasn't why I was in front of them. Who cares if you get the sale if you miss the person? Who cares? Yeah. People say, oh, that's not true. It's all about the money. You're a clown. And your money will testify against you one day. Mm. That's what's terrible. The things you have. That's a, I'm dropping a CSI sting on that. The money you have and the things you have will stand one day all along the sides of you and mock you and say, look what you gave up. Look what you chose to do. Look how you used to talk. Look what you didn't gain. Look at all the compromise you made to get us. And it becomes a testimony against you. It's terrifying, Jim. For the love of money, 
is the root of all evil. It's a different thing. Money is a beautiful amplifier. The whole world is commerce. It's the love of money. And what people will do thinking that that's what they need to do to get the money, whether it's compromising in a perverted way, in some crazy, you know, we see it all over the news, everything else, which I don't watch anymore, by the way. Hallelujah. I don't watch. I don't scroll. I don't. It's called, ready for this? You might want to hit that screen button again. (laughs) It's called the death scroll. The more you scroll, I I don't do it anymore. Yeah. You're in control of it. There it was. Yeah. I don't, I don't have, I don't, my eye gates, my ear gates. Let me, let me tell you what our life has become. And you may, I need, I need to pivot hard for a second. A, a year ago, my family and I decided, first of all, what's God called us to do, right? Who cares what your vocation is if you've found yourself 20 years waking up, realizing you're not doing what you're supposed to do in the first place. Okay. Yeah. And so we, as a family, dove in to the scripture. Uh, we have uh, sought God like we never have in our lives. I wouldn't, I would honestly say that I wouldn't even want to know who my, I wouldn't want to know myself three months ago, six months ago, a year ago compared to how far we've come now. Yeah. Every day we're in the word. I get up early and this is not like play my fiddle and look at me. I had to get to a place where I, I knew the answer, but I couldn't keep saying I was too busy. I let Seeking God, reading, getting in the word, and, and become the first fruits. We found, we literally have almost like a revelation now, it seems as though, where we're honoring God with our first fruits of our income, with our time, with our week, with our day, our family. We're all in agreement. And every, we have, there's been such peace. There's been such clarity. There's been such um, freedom from the angst and the anxiety of the world. And you just see stuff, you see through stuff for what it is. Because why? If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added unto you. And what the lie is, is that we chase all the other things and seek God last. Yeah. And that is the age we're in right now. So I'm just so humbled because I, my, Holly and I have sit there and we'll cry. We just think about, we could have made other decisions. We could have... A year from a year ago, done stuff very different, but a year ago we made choices and look where we are now. Our whole family has gone through intergalactic levels of change and, and heart change and peace and, and freedom and joy because we've allowed first things to be first. So yeah. um, you don't ever have to resort to, you know, the, 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 the flesh and the soulish ways of operating in life if you sow first to the things of the Spirit, because then God honors you. God honors and backs up integrity. If you're not doing it in an honorable and integrous way, you're going to have to back yourself up, and then you're going to be exhausted because you're constantly trying to figure out how you can stay one step ahead of the heels that are biting you. It ain't worth it. Well, even thinking about conflict, you know, whenever you're in conflict with somebody, if you know you have the truth on your side, you're free. That's an easy conflict. You're free. Correct. You know. I know that from experience. Right. You yeah. know, when you realize that everything you've been through is the truth and the, the person, your, your adversary, uses lies and deception and misconduct, well, this is easy. Well, it goes this back is, to This people, is easily winnable. Well, like people that have they've had a, uh, uh, they've been healed, right? They went through a healing. Yeah. People say, well, God doesn't heal day. That happened to the apostles. No, 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 no. Right now, da, 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 da. your arguments mean nothing. Yeah. I stand here before you, like the man said, I once was blind, now I see. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Well, identifying them as smoke screens. Correct. You know, a lot of, you know, when I get into conversations about faith and, and Christ and everything, and if it's with a skeptic, I said, let's just start here. Did he or did he not exist? Yeah. That's a logical That's a a way to one. approach it. Okay. So, yeah, the, mis- the most historically documented right. figure in the history of the earth. Because there are people out there Correct. that say he never existed. Correct. Let's just start with the intellectual honesty yeah. of whether or not he existed. Yeah. And l- once we ad- agree that he ag- existed, the next step is to say, okay, did he do and say the things that he did and said or were accounted that he did and said? Which well, that's where I dr- for- That's where I draw a line. Okay. That's a good starting point. Let's break down the data. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's, I think, my gifting is the apologetics aspect of it. Cause that's what got me. 
That's what made me think. If it was after my dad died and I, you know, my father figure was no more mm. and he was a, uh, there are three ways to live life kind of guy, the right way, the wrong way, and my way. And, you know, he thought he was have complete control of, over his life right up until the end. He was proven wrong. Mm. Um, he gave his life, you know, as far as we know, a uh, first will be last, last shall be first type of scenario. Uh, the story's on YouTube. My brother does a beautiful job laying it out. I'll send it to you. I'll be able to link it in the description. <clears throat> but he basically, at the end, had a uh, come to Jesus moment. I, he apologized to my brother for the way. I'm sorry I made you make the decisions in your life that uh, that you you made. I, I realize now I should have let you rely on your talents and your skills. And, you know, if you wanted to pursue music, I should have let you do that. But I was of the generation that go to college, get a good degree, get a good col- uh, uh, job. I didn't want to have you try and live this risky dream without something to fall back on. He was very regretful about that. My brother always... To this day, he'll tell me, he says, I still hear dad's voice in my head saying, but he needs something to fall back on. He's in his fifties. The whole, the, you know? there was a whole generation that spoke like that. Oh, totally. I was, we were part of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why don't you, don't you, you need something to fall back on. You need something. If you don't want to go to, go to college, you're going to be well, a loser. That was impressed upon me. If not told to me in my high school years, I'm not kidding. Oh, you, you were ridiculed if you thought otherwise. Yeah. 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 College is a path. There's no other way. So where are you going to college? I'm not. <gasps> yeah. I'm air, going to trade school. The room. I'm going to trade school. Oh my gosh. You're going to Henry Abbott Tech. That's where yeah. all the losers You're who couldn't have college go. At some, at some gas station. Right. And then I, when I actually worked for an electrician in Danbury, Connecticut and working with other guys that I went to high school with that took that path and you realized, wow, they're actually making a good living and they've got no debt. Uh-oh. There are people actually that are graduating college that can't even touch what they're making. And these guys are, are are satisfied with what they're doing. That's one. That's one hot point right now. I, um, I think I hate debt with yeah. with all of my heart. Um, I hate it. Oh, it, college it, debt for sure. Yeah. Well, because it's not forgivable, but yeah. debt in general, because you know the the, the borrower is slave to the lender. Um, it is a it is a miserable. I mean, you can you can use leverage and debt calculated you have but to you really yeah. bit better be in a position where you are have the upper hand regardless even if it goes south because to live on that is is bondage right. it's total bondage so we're that's another thing we're, we're in right now it's like we just we just hate it because the stuff you bought you paid five times for anyway and it's not cool anymore so why'd you get it i mean right we've just switched everything to debit card everything is just cash or we don't get it wow yeah and yeah I love that. But getting back to the whole, you know, had to throw that in there because it feels good. <laughs> you know, when I have somebody in front of me that's wondering about or is skeptical mm-hmm. or even cynical, I said, just, just be honest with yourself. Did he do or say the things that he didn't said? Mm-hmm. Okay. Or people said that he didn't said and witnessed. I said, ask yourself how a message lasts for 2000 years. An advertising message. That's what it is. And every major dictator on the planet tried to eradicate and squash it to no avail. And every, there were hearts changed and lives changed throughout yep. history, yep. different times, different lands. He didn't say, I know the way. Right. I, I have a way, way for you. This well, he was like Buddha. No, he wasn't. No. Nope. Buddha, Buddha re- re- readily told you, I am not the one to look towards. Look towards my teaching, my Dharma. They're all dead and in the grave. Right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, except by me. And also look at the fact that I, there, we haven't found a body. <laughs> so, well, even, you know, and the, fu- know. the funny thing is, is, is uh, it was widely mm-hmm. spread, if you read scripture, it says it was widely spread amongst the Jews of that time. Make the, all of the, the, uh, the high priests and the, and the Pharisees, they made a point. They said, make sure you spread it abroad, all through the provinces, that his disciples stole the body. Yeah. They... Push that heavily at the beginning, which didn't, it, which was contradictory to the action of, well, okay, what about your Roman soldiers that were put on point at the tomb? The Roman soldiers would have had, had they would to have die. Been, they would have been friggin' annihilated. They would have been killed because if they, if they missed their post and yeah. fulfill their, their mission, they would have been killed themselves. That didn't happen. Correct. But they, they still survived. Because the Romans Well, at the end have, of the day, you know, people are always wanting to argue mm-hmm. this about Jesus, that about Jesus, you know. You know, has the Bible been changed? Has this happened? Has that happened? Are there many different ways? What's Jesus' real name? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, shut up. (laughs) 
Let me ask you a question. You can know all of that. Have you ever surrendered your life to him? Don't tell me about him if you don't know him. When is the time? Give me the instance when you remember, when you acknowledge and you had that moment when you surrendered your life to Christ. When was it? Explain it to me. And if the person cannot explain, I said, then don't tell me about Jesus that you don't know. Don't want to hear it. You're not qualified. I can tell you exactly the day, the minute, what happened in vivid detail, the weeks, the months, and the years afterward, and still today and every day, the change that happened because of that moment. That's why I say, when did it happen? Oh, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, then we, we're going to move on to another conversation. Let's talk about the 31 flavors at Baskin Robbins. Anything else, but we're not talking about that anymore. Right. So. I'm going to challenge you. Yes, sir. Maybe convict you. Do it. With your gifts and talents that we've talked about here on this particular episode, especially in the, the first one where we met for the first time. When are you going to start showing the world what you can do? Either via podcast or. I like that. Reels or something like that. Short form content. I think that uh, you have a lot. My boys are nodding there. (laughs) You have a lot to say to the world. You are similar to my business partner. I call him the reluctant social entrepreneur because he just, uh, and it's like your gifts and talents. The world needs to hear, especially with that void of authenticity yeah. Yeah. When that, that needs to be heard in, in influential people. And you, my friend, are an influential person, whether you know it or not. I know you do. The, the answer is yes and now. Okay. And the answer is no excuses. <laughs> and the answer is <laughs> right. anything that may have been my reasoning up to this point, ah, over preparation, let me get this stuff together, da 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 let me yeah. get that. It means nothing. It is... It is it goes back to this, one of the most powerful moments of my life. I was in church service one day, and the pastor had spoken. This was in Florida. He was preaching, and he said, uh, let your light so shine, talking about how you just hold back. He says, no light or no lamp is to be hidden under the bed or hidden under the table. It's supposed to be high up in the room so that everything in the room can be illuminated and everyone in the room can see. Yeah. That's the position of a believer. I don't mean a believer. I'm sorry. Somebody that has given their life to Jesus, very different. Yeah. Believers are one thing. Somebody that's actually born again, had a nature change and actually surrendered to Christ. Very different thing. Don't want to, that's just the reality. For that person, because there's now light to actually shine, yeah. to hide it or to suppress it or to um, not have it be um, seen is, is a travesty. And, um, as of late through our journey, especially the last several weeks, I would say the last month, month and a half, there's been such a burning fire on the inside of us just to speak life and truth and be vocal, unashamed, fearless, and getting before people and just giving them hope. Because the world is hopeless, Jim. The world is frantic. All of the cars, all of the money, all of the sex, all of the power, all the political power, the praise of men lasts for a season. All the accolades leaves the person empty and wanton. The highest suicide rate on the planet is for the ultra rich. No. There, it's a spiritual problem. And who you, so all the other stuff is a byproduct of what's going on by either the septic tank inside of somebody that's just spewing out toxin and poison or the life in somebody that's, expo- that's spilling out light. So the answer to your question to challenge you, I say, yes, I take the challenge yeah. and I'm going to do it to everybody seeing. It's just time we, we've, we've, I'm just thankful. You know, people say, well, you should have done it when you were younger. Let me tell you something, I'm 52. I don't feel like I've missed any time because the person I am now needed to, needed to become. I get it. I get that. It, I had, see that. it had to be. Yeah. Yes, there's grace in any other time. I could have done it for a long time before. Of course yeah. I could have. I, yeah. could have. I could have started a church. I could have pastored a church. I could have been done anything I could, for decades. I'm just thankful. I have an amazing wife. Our marriage is unbelievable. Children, unbelievable. Fruit, unbelievable. So you can be successful in every other arena. All the money, the accolades, the social media following, et cetera. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. So at least right. in my own, in my mind, first things first, <laughs> I 
ha- are in order. Yeah. Now it's time <clears throat> to to speak at large. Yeah. So yes, and and I would I would welcome any help. And if you want to uh, ask me to go into a mastermind or a high ticket, uh, I might do it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing: I think we're going to have a tip of the spear offering, and then we're going to get them to pay more. Yes, 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 you know? yes. And if you, yeah, for those of you that feel called, we're going <laughs> to take you into this deep thing. That's no, right. but no, Jim, it has to. It has to be because you know what God's called me to do needs to come forth. Just like all of the watchers and the, and the listeners right now, um, throw off the cares the entanglements and the sins that so easily beset you and keep you from the high calling. I was telling my son this today. I said, I said, son, and we had a long conversation this morning. They always come down. I'm reading. I'm in the word. They come down the stairs and we talk and I share some stuff. I said, do you see this pair of glasses? The purpose of these glasses was in the mind of the maker of the glasses. They are meant to be used for seeing. No. They're not meant to be used as a hammer. They're not made to be used as a screwdriver. They're not made to be used as a wedge, right? They're not made to be used as anything other than the purpose of the thing. And so they're happiest being used for their purpose. And when they're used for their purpose, the fruit of what they were created to do actually shines. And this is the problem. We are all so busy trying to make a dollar and trying to fulfill all these crazy (laughs) cravings because every 10 seconds we're being barraged by fear, comparing ourselves to others, what you need to get, the next toy, the next car, the next house, the next thing, the next dress, the next, you know, augmentation, the next whatever that we have now created. We're using everything. We're abusing. See, unless the object is used for the purpose that it was created, abuse is inevitable. No. And each person is called for something very specific and I, if you have to fast and pray, if you need to shut out everything, if you need, I don't care what it takes, your life and your calling and the accountability before God one day. What did you do with the talents I gave you? Nothing. I was too busy making money. It's not going to hold water, guys. It's not going to hold water. It's just time to get real honest with that. And I think. Um, You're due. I'm due. You are due. I'm due. So with that being said, where will people be able to find you? Is there a GabrielSedlack.com? There was. Yeah. I whacked it. Uh, I'm, I'm reworking the Gabriel Actually, the best thing is my, um, I guess my, my YouTube. I did some fun yeah. videos about the truck and some of our vehicles just for kicks, but my, my YouTube channel, say it again. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. You know, all yeah. Facebook. YouTube, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, Gabriel Sedlak, but my YouTube is Gabriel Sedlak. Yeah. Well, you know what he needs to yeah. do is get a uh, LinkedIn or a link tree. With all the different links, you have one. I have it. Point yeah. point your URL, Gabriel Sedlak, to the link yeah. tree for now, yeah. where people can at least find and follow you. Yeah. And if anything, see if you can buy Sedlak.com and Gabe.com. I have I have a whole lot of domains. Do you? I have a lot of domains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The simplest way, you know, do the opposite of what I did with this podcast, where uh, I had to come up with the MMTBP.com and mostly Middle Tennessee Business Podcast.com, well, which is a mouthful. And and Jim and I were talking for you guys watching again um, about YouTube. Now my my boys are pretty. You know, you take somebody twenty five and under. I know this is a generalism, but they understand stuff that the adults don't get, kind of in their sleep. Yeah. But one thing we've done over the last several months now is we've really nerded out on YouTube, all things YouTube, the science of YouTube, how it works, what to do. Honestly, it's the greatest platform for anything. Anything you guys are doing, if you're not routing it. Through YouTube links, you're crazy. All marketing, everything needs to run through YouTube because that is how the world sees you. Everything else is very, very limited, and I would highly suggest that uh, that you that you do that. Um, and your, your son is actually a burgeoning YouTube consultant, Aiden. He's brilliant. <laughs> he's really dove into it and yeah. uh, uncovered it. It's it's almost unlocking a passion of his. I would imagine. But that's cool, man. So say with, something about it. <laughs> yeah, I got, I'll, I'll pop it up. Hold on, there you go. Here, grab your mic. I, I I can't get you on camera, but you can. People can hear you. Or you can lean over here if they want to see. No, your no, face. it's fine. No, okay. no, yeah, I do. Uh, I'm a kind of a YouTube nerd, and we've just the last month or so really dove into like his YouTube channel and uh, did, done it as professionally as we can do it, and it's really taken off. And we've done more in the last t- uh, month or so than we have in. Uh, 12 years on his YouTube channel. Yeah. You've seen more numbers, more fruit, more gains, more watchers, more views, more subscribers, more everything in 
a few weeks yeah. than we've seen in 12 years. So um, I got to pick your brain on that. The world is waiting to hear your message, guys. All of you have a message and uh, don't hide it under the table. Let your light so shine. So that story real quick. So I'm in church. He says, let your light so shine. And when he said let, he stopped and he would just come. He said let and he would say it again. He would just pray a few minutes and he said let. Anyway, this is what God does. He takes a word. He takes it from a word. He makes it rhema. It hit my spirit. It exploded on the inside of me. It hit me. I saw it for what it was. And that's hard to explain unless you understand what I'm talking about. And some of you do. The revelation of let hit me hard. That was the beginning of my entire life changing. And um, a whole lot of other things happen because of it. It's amazing how God can take anything. And once he breathes on it, it has life. He can take anything that is average and make it supernatural. Any of you that feel limited or unskilled or that you don't have enough or that you don't have the skills or the talents to be or do what you need to do, Surrender yourselves long enough and let God breathe on it. Resurrect those things that really bring fulfillment in your lives. And then let your light so shine. You'll, you'll create a magnificent legacy for your children. I wish I had it. Uh, I, uh, anyway, I digress. I'll, I'll bring that. It, there, there, is a, there is a minister that had 1,394 of his descendants were researched. Yeah. Almost 100% of them were world changers. Yeah. Because he submitted himself. Talk about legacy. Mm-hmm. That's what matters. It totally matters. Who cares if you have the big house in the neighborhood, you can tell everybody where you live, what street you have. And every time you come in the driveway, there's a new car. How are people going to remember you? You know what? I, surely the praise of man lasts, but for a season, surely you've re- received a reward already. The, the same people that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. A couple of weeks later, we're saying crucify, crucify. So if you're trying to pre- please people, folks, that's the wrong place you should be getting your praise from. You better have your father pleased with you, not people. Boom. Well, with that being said, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, you can uh, check everything out with Gabriel Sedlak at uh, probably currently GabrielSedlak.com. We're going to make sure it's pointed to the right place for the time being, I would imagine. It's dead. It's, it's, uh, dead it's in holding. It's in holding. Yeah, I'm because I'm, re- I'm resurrecting my website. But if you go to Gabriel Sedlak on my YouTube or on any of the go. socials. And again, I, I, I came here, and I, and I mean this honestly. I came here, I said, Jim, I could talk about anything today for me, but how can I serve you guys? You, please do me a favor. All of you in the comments or wherever this thing is posted, say shared, shared, right? Shared in the comments, shared, shared on YouTube, right? Shared. Take this, whether it's this one or another one, share Jim's podcast with the world. Let's all rally around the man that serves all of us so selflessly and take him through the stratosphere um, by, uh, by promoting this man. The world needs to hear what he has to say. He's got a lot more than, than you might expect. Like and subscribe. Like and like subscribe. And, subscribe. and don't forget to click the notification bell. You know, and uh, at that, I'll just say, just go to mmtbp.com and we'll call it a show because <laughs> you ramped it down for me. <laughs> Thanks for being on. Blessings, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Whoa!